This is a very short video segment on chapter one of my textbook. Chapter one is the introduction uh, on, uh, on the book and uh, the title of the textbook is uh, Composite Finite Element Analysis Essentials for 3D Experience. Okay, so let's move on there. All right, first I wanna make some general comments about composite structures. Now, this is something that has been <clears throat> around during the history of civilization. These are not new to mankind and the nature. And the only reason that mankind and nature can survive is because these elements of composite materials are in them. Okay? All organic and biological entities have some elements of composite structure buried in them. For example, bones and flesh in living creatures are mainly composite material. And cellulose materials such as trees, plants, and soil are also composite material. Although soil is not cellulose. Okay. Now here's our example. There's a bone, and you can see that this bone is made of several different types of elements that are interconnected somehow okay and a tree trunk is made of for example the fibers which are uh, along the length along the peripheral and then the matrix which is something that is holding it together <clears throat> and the good old mud straw brick where mud by itself does not have any strength however if you add straw to it then it becomes considerably stronger now, the main push behind uh, the, 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 the modern advancement in domain of composite were spearheaded by, uh, by aviation industry and spacecraft launchings, okay? Uh, not surprisingly, automotive, uh, automotive, uh, automotive sector uh, followed suit and mainly because of the fuel efficiency. Now, uh, these recent advances for the past 60 years, uh, for example, carbon fiber, glass fiber, reinforced materials uh, can be seen and understand, uh, understood based on a single photograph right there. So this is a human hair, the big one, and there is a carbon fiber, which is the very narrow, short, uh, uh, cylinder that you can see here now we are lucky that the class, uh, classical lamination theory happened to be the proper tool for theoretical investigation of these new inventions now if you go to the classical lamination theory it has its roots in plate theory and uh, the, the the most basic uh, uh, elementary uh, uh, plate theory is based on uh, Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff assumption Okay. Uh, in other words, the lines which are perpendicular to the uh, mid-plane of the plate will stay, still remain perpendicular to it. And then the, the variation of that, the more generalized version of that, is under mindlin reissner formulation, who says that, okay, a, a line that's perpendicular to the middle plane after deformation remains a line, as it does in Kirchhoff, but it can rotate, it's no longer... If it was originally perpendicular to the middle plane, is no longer perpendicular to it. Okay. For example, if you're dealing with a very thin uh, laminated composite, then Kirchhoff assumption is very good unless the thicknesses become large. Okay. On the other hand, if you look at a honeycomb sandwich panel, uh, that Kirchhoff theory is not valid anymore. Therefore, one cannot use uh, uh, Kirchhoff theory anymore. But uh, Mindlin Reissner formulation is still uh, valid, or at least it's performing much better. Now, let's say a few words about the finite element aspects. Back in the 18th century, these masters of uh, science and engineering, Euler and Lagrange, basically they developed the calculus of variation. Okay. In the 19th century, uh, people like Galerkin, Rayleigh, and Ritz. They use computational tools. They use this calculus of variation as a 
uh, and computations together to come up with some approximate solutions, okay? And then the very first paper that resembles anything uh, like the present modern finite elements uh, was actually done by Curran and Hilbert, both mathematicians in the early 19, uh, in the early 20th century, around the, I think it was probably around 1920s or 1930s, something in that, in that vicinity. Now, <clears throat> Uh, the turning point, however, was the NASRAN program. NASRAN program was funded by the uh, U U.S. government, by, by NASA, and the idea was to develop a, a, a general purpose structure, structure uh, uh, finite element package. In fact, NASRAN stands for NASA Structure Analysis, okay? And it was developed in the 1960s, uh, and... Uh, then it took about 10 years for commercial FEA solvers to pop up, okay? And among them, I can refer to, for example, Abacus, Ansys, Mark, Elfini, Cosmos, Nisa, Lucas, Adina, and Ideas. Actually, when you look at this, Abacus, Ansys, and uh, Adina uh, were developed around 1970s. Okay. Now these other ones follow suit, but they're all they were all commercial uh, packages. In principle, if you have any package, any finite element package that can handle shell elements, then it can easily be modified to handle laminar composite parts. And the main reason this happened is because of this ABD matrix. Remember, in uh, elasticity, for example, let's think about, for example, linear elasticity. The stresses are related to strains through stiffness matrix, okay? So you write stress on one side equal to stiffness matrix times strain. In the case of laminated composite, it's, it's not the stress that we look at in this way. We look at the generalized force, generalized force uh, or force resultants, force resultant and moment resultant equal to the ABD matrix times in-plane strains and out-of-plane curvatures. So uh, basically, if you have a package that can handle shared element, what you do is you modify it, its uh, constitutive uh, equ equation, which means that stiffness may take, and you can handle laminated composites. Now, the focus of this book is uh, the 3D experience software business platform. And uh, in it, uh, in it, there's embedded an FEA solver, okay? And of course, a CAD solver. Now, it, it, it enjoys the best of both worlds because as a, as a native or embedded, embedded uh, uh, CAD, it uses the CATIA, and in our case, of course, CATIA composite design. And the, for the solver, FEA solver, it uses the abacus, which is stand, uh, state of the art, state of the art and industry standard for finite element calculations. Now, if you're going to use this book, and uh, uh, you have to have some very basic familiarity with 3D experience interface, you should be able to, to make a very simple part, nothing complicated, plates, cylinders, and things like that. And uh, uh, if uh, if you know, it doesn't take you very long, so, but I make that assumption that you can do this, you're not intimidated by making a, a very simple part. But your goal is not complicated CAD drawings, but just the analysis of a composite part. Now, because of this assumption, I have to repeat things over and over and over, and have to specify, say, say things which may be elementary to some people, but uh, because they already know some aspects of 3D experience, but uh, it arrives at that cost, really, repetition, okay? Now, uh, to help you, uh, if, if you have some issues with that, to help you, I have prepared these video, video segments that, uh, for every single chapter of the book, that leads you through the highlights of uh, what is in the book in terms of uh, written stuff, okay? Uh, so the combination of reading and following the book and watching the videos will help you a great deal. Good luck, and this was the end of chapter one.